Imagine a player who has given everything. Every match, he's left his soul on the field, battled through injuries, racism, and criticism, only to arrive at the peak moment of his career. Vinicius Jr., one of Real Madrid's shining stars, was expected by many to bring home the Ballon d'Or. But when the day finally arrived, he didn't just lose. He was blindsided, robbed, or so the fans say. Let's dive into the story behind the headlines, the drama, and the politics that some believe held Vinicius back from football's greatest individual honor. Madrid, the club that had stood by Vinicius throughout every battle, had high expectations. After a season filled with brilliance, resilience, and relentless drive, Vinicius had reached a level few could touch. He had battled through injuries, endured racism, and dazzled fans with his unique style of play. This wasn't just about stats on paper. It was about character and spirit, about how he played for the badge, for his fans and for Brazil. The young winger's journey felt faded, the kind that ended with the golden trophy in his hand. But fate, it seemed, had other plans. The footballing gods can be cruel. On the night of the Ballon d'Or, Real Madrid was absent. The Spanish giants, known for their glamour, pride and influence in the sport, boycotted the ceremony. What should have been a night of celebration turned into a night of bitter silence. The entire world wanted to know, why had Madrid refused to attend? The answer lay in the whispers that had circulated in the hours before the event. Rumors flew that the hundred-strong panel of voters had not chosen Vinicius as the best player in the world. Instead, the award would go to Rodri, Manchester City stalwart midfielder, a man who had enjoyed a spectacular season in his own right. He had lifted his fourth consecutive Premier League title, triumphed at Euro 2024 with Spain, and had been named the best player of the tournament. An injury had sidelined him during part of the season, but his impact on the field was undeniable. For Madrid fans and Vinicius supporters, however, this felt like a betrayal. The panel's decision to honor Rodri over Vinicius sparked outrage. Madrid was furious and with good reason. Their young Brazilian had poured his heart into the game, had defied expectations, and had given everything for the sport he loved. How could this be? As news of the snub spread, the footballing community exploded in response. Social media was awash with anger, disappointment, and a sense of injustice. Vinicius himself took to X, formerly known as Twitter, to express his determination. I'll do it ten times if I have to. They're not ready. These words, raw and defiant, spoke volumes about his resolve and the pain of a dream denied. For Vinicius, this wasn't just a loss. It was a wound, a mark that would drive him to greater heights. But Vinicius was not alone in his frustration. In an unexpected twist, Brazil's legendary player Marta joined the chorus of those voicing their anger. Known for her passion and skill, Marta had watched Vinicius's journey with pride, hoping to see a young Brazilian crowned as the best in the world. In a video that quickly went viral, she shared her fury with the world, standing in a car park pushing a baby stroller with her dog inside. Marta ranted about the injustice on the decision. I waited all year to see Vinicius deservedly recognized as the best player of the moment. Now he tells me they won't give him the Ballon d'Or? What Ballon d'Or is that? No, it's over. Her words, bizarre as they were poignant, resonated with fans worldwide. The image of Brazil's greatest female player vented her frustration in such an unfiltered way. It became a symbol of solidarity. Madrid, though absent from the ceremony, did not go unnoticed. Despite boycotting the event, they still managed to make their presence felt. The club was awarded the Men's Club of the Year and Coach of the Year titles, yet no one was there to receive them. The absence of Madrid's 50-strong delegation was more than just a statement. It was a message to the footballing world that they would not stand for what they saw as an injustice. They had expected their star player to be honored, to be celebrated as the best. Instead, they watched as the golden trophy went to another. For Vinicius, the snub was personal. He had carried the weight of expectations, not just for himself, but for his club, his fans, and his country. To lose the Ballon d'Or, not to be a seasoned veteran like Lionel Messi or a goal-scoring machine like Erling Haaland, but to Rodri, a player known for his tactical brilliance but not necessarily the flash and flair that Vinicius bought, was a bitter pill to swallow. Rodri's win, however, well-deserved in the eyes of some, felt to others like a decision based more on reputation than performance. Yet as he had done so many times before, Vinicius took the setback with resilience. 
His message promising to do it 10x if I have to was more than a vow. It was a promise to his supporters and a warning to his rivals. He would not be silenced, nor would he be broken. This was merely the beginning of his journey, and he would continue to strive to fight and to prove himself time and time again. In the aftermath, fans debated the decision with fervor. Many saw Rodri's victory as the result of political machinations within the sport, a choice that overlooked the spirit and passion that Vinicius brought to the game. For Madrid supporters, this was the biggest robbery in football history, a moment of injustice that would be remembered and talked about for years. Former and current teammates like Tony Cruz and Eduardo Camavinga voiced their disapproval, standing by Vinicius and echoing the sentiment that he had been wrong. Despite the disappointment, life went on. Vinicius and Real Madrid returned to the pitch, aiming to reclaim their glory. Following a painful 4-0 defeat in El Clasico, they prepared for their next challenge against Valencia. For Vinicius, the pain of the Ballon d'Or snub would not fade quickly, but it would fuel his ambition, drive him to new heights, and push him to prove that he was indeed among the best in the world. Was it fair or did he get robbed?